Hello, and welcome to episode 131 of Flix Into Six. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony Costanzo, with me forever and always, the man, the myth, the Logan curse, Alessandro Bayelsi. Say hello, Al. I see what the problem is. I twisted the bag too many times. <laughs> Perfect. That's a great scene. That could be your favorite moment. On this week's episode, that Tenet trailer, though, and other patented ramblings, all before diving into our flick of the week, Logan Lucky. Oh, lest I forget, a wonderful quiz. Oh. But first, Al, what are we drinking? What, is this a quiz you made, or is this a quiz you No, made? no. I, one that I found that was just chef's kiss. <laughs> hey, look, my drive finally works again. Saving is now, uh, editing is now available. Saving is done. This is nice. Oh, sweet. So Al has notes. Al has notes. I have, actually, as of currently as we speak, I have one note. And it's my complete <laughs> length review, followed by my review. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I'm coming less and less prepared to these. Um, although, all that matters is that I'm mentally and emotionally prepared today. Because I, you know, I can come and I can spit hot fire. It'll be great. I got great stuff for you guys today. Just <laughs> me being here. Because my alternative, the thing is, that line was just too great from the movie because... I had another thing I was going to go with. You and me kind of got it out of the way beforehand. I was going to say, because of the quarantine, I now have a mullet to match my brand new truck. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Quarantine life is killing my haircut, um, which is to say... Kim, Kim cut mine. I was going to say, I noticed it. Um, you hadn't had your headphones on yet, and I was like, he looks like he got it cleaned up on the sides, which means Kim just... Like, Anthony just told Kim, leave the top alone, because the top looks long. Leave the top yeah. alone. And just buzz the sides and please, for the love of God. Yeah, literally party on the top. And that's about it. Because <laughs> you got the Macklemore <laughs> slash um, Roger from Doug haircut. Oh, 100%. Yeah, Roger from Doug was what I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> so I totally drew a blank. I should know his last name. I just couldn't remember what it was. Oh, what's his last name? I feel like his last name is something ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know it. Like, like there was Skeeter Valentine. There's Yeah, yeah. Actually, what was Doug's last name? I definitely know. Funny? What's that? Doug Funny. Oh, Doug. Doug Funny. Patty Mayonnaise. Mm-hmm. I can't... I'm totally drawing a blank on Roger's last name. What the hell is Roger? See, this Roger is M. Klotz. Klotz? Oh, Roger Klotz. Klotz yes. Klotz. <laughs> anyway. Um, what are we drinking? <laughs> what are we Road doing here? Palisades <laughs> Pineapple. This is made in L.A. Uh, it's an American wheat ale with pineapple and apricot. And what I realized is... When I opened it, I did not notice so viscerally the smell as you did. So let me just take a whiff. Take a whiff. The weird thing is, I don't recall the taste of apricots, much like Frodo doesn't recall the taste of strawberries. <laughs> but as soon as I took a smell of this, I was like, oh, this smells like apricots. Yeah, it's uh, it smells amazing. I can't wait to try this one. It's an ale with pineapple, apricot, and natural flavors. Unfortunately, there's nothing else to say about it. It does have a delightful little... Um, can art. It's like great can art made in LA. Little helicopter cruising in the background. Miami Vice. <laughs> well, yeah, it's Miami Vice like color sensibilities, though clearly LA like landscape because it's right. like it's that picture of like up the you know as you're in the valley where all the the hill like those ridiculous mansions are up on like the side of the hill. I was gonna say it's just to the side of the Hollywood sign. Hollywood sign, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I told you know we've been going through it. And you were like you you drop Sopranos for a while. You put on hiatus so you can go through some scrubs. Mm -hmm. Totally forgot you were you had finally given Bojack a chance after all those time and you seem yeah. to be enjoying it. Yeah, it's very good. Um, it's very good. No, it's good though that you like. It's like no, nope, it's not a problem. It just kind of fell by the wayside. But I will be getting <laughs> back to it. I didn't yeah. go off it because I don't like it. Like, but I do think it's funny that the actual like art style and coloration, while the LA landscape and the Miami sensibilities is eight bit like digital like oh, box. Yeah. <laughs> It's like when you it's like when you open up a, an image in Microsoft Paint and then like invert the colors like old school. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> you know what? I and as everything gets washed out. <laughs> as I smell this and I think about apricots, do you know what this reminds me of? <laughs> I've never... I wish you were saying that in relation to something else entirely. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, what I think of when I think of apricots? Because honestly, honestly, I've never had an actual apricot. I've had apricot brandy. Uh, okay. More more in or on stuff than like on its own, but sure. I have consumed apricot brandy in some form. But you've I never had like, an actual apricot? No, I've never had like an actual huh. fresh apricot. But delicious. I have had like, and I am almost thirty. I am twenty nine and a half. Like literally a couple of days ago, <laughs> and 
uh, when I like 25 years ago, I remember for some reason my dad went through a kick of a few months where he kept buying dried, dried apricots. apricots yeah. All the time. It yeah. was like, you know how far back it is? And it's when we were still in the condo in Vermont. Dude, I don't know why, but I almost have a vision of your dad eating dried apricots. <laughs> in my condo in Vermont? <laughs> I, just in general, and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, there was a, I feel like there was one year. It must have probably was like the summer. Summer is like, like four weeks, but like, let's not talk about that. Um, <laughs> it's basically middle of July to middle of August. Um, I remember specifically a very short window of time where he just always had dried apricots. It felt like it, he snacked on it multiple nights a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I have the, I had like, that's, it's weird that we have random memories of dried apricots because mine is of uh, a, a, a fishing trip. Okay. Like multiple fishing trips where dried apricots were the snack of choice for some reason. And I just didn't care for them at the time. I know for a fact we did not have dried apricots when we went fishing last year. Not this time. No. no. <laughs> and, I about, and I wasn't about to buy them. Uh, but anyway, I remember trying one because he was eating them all the time. So mm-hmm. when you're a little kid, oh, your mom or dad is eating something, <laughs> drinking something all the time. It must be good. Why would, What's why that? would they be eating it or drinking it every day? Yeah. Um, and four to five year old me was not a fan of dried apricots. <laughs> that was the last time. <laughs> that was the last time twenty five years ago. So, but I always have that vividly in my mind because I don't think I've ever seen a single person eat a dried apricot ever since then. <laughs> I know I've seen the bag. Actually, I, I don't remember what the brand was, but I know I've seen the bag. Yeah. The, the many years since <laughs> the exact bag of the exact same brand. I was like, that was the apricots, my dad. One day I'm just gonna get those for you as a gift. I'm not You're turning gonna, 30. That will be your 30th birthday gift. <laughs> Dried apricots. Give it to my dad for his birthday. <laughs> no, it'll be like a box filled with dried apricots. But if you dig through it, some sort of delightful boots. <laughs> <laughs> you can only get so mad at that. But you have to eat your way in. <laughs> eat your way in. It's going to be like a crate, though. Like a like legit like nailed Great. Like I'm gonna get a knock on my door, and this, yeah, it's gonna be like an old school, like Indiana Jones. Top, oh yeah, top men tor- sort 100%. of. Hundred percent. Like, As it gets dropped off, there's an eclipse. It gets dropped off, there's an eclipse. <laughs> you hear that like classic indie music, like playing mm-hmm. in the background. There's a forklift doing it up my driveway for no apparent oh, reason. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You need character. you need some sort of uh uh like uh pipe thing that you can stick into the ground with a. With some sort of charm on the top to open it, it's going to be a whole rigmarole. The staff. Did it, did it describe staff. the staff? Staff is the word that I could. It was just gone. Yes, the staff has to be two meters high. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get the beer taste. Oh yeah, that's right. We're talking about beer. Cheers. It smells like apricot and it tastes like pineapple. Yeah, I like this though. It's. Mm. <laughs> this is the sort of pale ale you could drink. Dangerously too much of during a nice hot summer day. Hundred percent. This is um, a really good beer. Better like it. The quality of the beer. This is like not a good bad movie, but you know, like a fun. Movie <laughs> I know what you mean. You see a movie and it's like it's not good, but it's so damn fun. And mm-hmm. I would watch the shit out of this movie. Like I would drink the shit out of this beer all the time. Great not, movie, not a great film. Yes, yes. Like, <laughs> great entertainment, not great <laughs> cinematography. Or like, like right, right. Great, not great cinema, not great. Film, like mm. this is a damn tasty beer. It's not like a great beer, but I I would enjoy drinking it. Oh, I'm gonna go out of my way to find this one. Yeah, this is a two thumbs up. We haven't had one in a while. You gotta find this is what the two thumbs up. We haven't oh, had one ooh, in a while. I feel wow. like yeah, I'm I'm uh, all about this. No, the one we did two weeks ago was really good. We both really liked it. I don't even remember what it was now. <sighs> I don't even remember what other beer is. <laughs> oh, so delicious. <laughs> you don't even remember what shopping is. I don't, what is shop? <laughs> what, what, I, what is shop? <laughs> I want to just make a couple of burgers out in the hot sun. Have a whole cooler full of these bad boys. What, was it Reverie Les, Lefty Lucy? Was that the one? That one was good. It <laughs> but that it was, was like a, good, good beer. That was during Across the Universe because yes. there was a beetle on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is perfect. This is awesome. This is tasty. It's very fruity despite... Well, actually, no, I guess it is made with pineapple, probably, because it said, like, apricot and pineapple and mm-hmm. other natural flavors. Because if it was a, if it was from the yeast or the hops, it, would, it wouldn't it would say it like that. Yeah, it almost has, like, um, I had this pineapple tea that I used to brew. That was, like, it's got a very, it's a very pineapple flavor, but it's not over, it wasn't, like, a, it wasn't sweet. It was just, the, you know, that, and it, it, this has that flavor of that tea in it. 
Okay. Which I really like. Hear so me. like probably dried pineapples, obviously, like in there. Hear me out. Yeah. Sunkissed makes pineapple soda. Yes. A 20 ounce bottle has 85 grams of sugar. That's how you know it's good. <laughs> That's I'm sorry. 85. For a 20 ounce bottle, yes. Okay. For reference, a bottle of plain Pepsi. <laughs> 65. <laughs> and like Mountain Dew was like 73. That's intense. It just comes with an insulin injection. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like packaged in and it's like oh, taped around the bottle. You know like Capri Sun has like the straw taped to it, like each pouch. <laughs> but it's like it's actually it's just so as you sip, it actually just jabs you in the face. <laughs> just a just a straight shot <laughs> with every sip. <laughs> yeah, it's the most accurate uh, glucose reading from your <laughs> cheekbone. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I because I remember I looked at a Pepsi and it was like sixty two or sixty five grams. I was like, well, that's a lot of sugar. Yeah. And I saw Mountain Dew seventy three. I was like, okay, that's sixty five is a lot, but it's like it's probably gonna end up being on the low end of the scale, which I was correct in. Yeah, it was like. Mountain Dew, a couple of different Mountain Dews are like 70, 73, 70. Mm-hmm. Jeez, that's a lot. Like, so cream soda was like 80, and I was like, holy fuck. And then I saw the pineapple sun kiss, and it was like 85 or 86 grams. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Mountain Dew was my jam. It was a lot of people's jam. But I haven't I, had soda in uh, probably over a year. <laughs> but that, that, the thing is, I don't drink soda ever unless occasionally I'll have like a rum and coke or something. Mm. Like I'll occasionally get one at the theater because I like, I like having it with the popcorn. But Honestly, otherwise, even then I typically don't get soda. I usually get like lemonade or iced tea. Mm. Or more, more often I get a bottle of water. Sure. Cause I drink so much fucking water. I drink a gallon of water just at work every day. Yeah. No, I, I, I've been, I, the last few times that I was going to the movies, I was, I would bring a bottle of water with me. Um, I'm not paying. I'm sorry. I'm just not paying four dollars for a bottle of water or eight, depending on where you are. <laughs> sure. I just don't often wear anything. I can smuggle a bottle. In. Oh no! I just carry it. In. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I just don't want to deal with the hassle. I, I don't think they do either. I think well, that's why it's fine. <laughs> but well, I suppose that's true. But yeah, no. I, I mean, and don't get me wrong. I you know, growing up, I loved soda. I mean, not sure. like plain Pepsi too often. Like I, I would have it or, or Coke, whatever. Um, I always liked something like I felt like if I was going to have it, I wanted something with the flavor. So like I liked mm-hmm. orange soda. I liked root beer. I love root beer. That's if yeah, I'm yeah, root beer is... for a soda. That's what I'm going to get. Is root beer like, is every nice. once in a while, like quarterly, I'll treat myself to like a root beer or, yeah. or a cream soda. You know, what I mean? in the glass bottle, if you can find it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll get really crazy and I'll buy a two liter of root beer. And I'll Close. have some. And then I'll forget about it for like three weeks. And then I'll remember it and I'll have a root beer float. Yes. And then the rest of the yes. two liter will not get drank. That's probably the way to do it because uh, I remember being younger trying to make root beer floats with a fresh bottle of root beer. And boy, oh boy, did that go south. <laughs> Why? Oh, it's, just, uh, it's just foam everywhere. Well, not even in the glass anymore. It's like the entire house is filled. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like you're making the rookie mistake, which, which, by the way, I've made a million times myself. You gotta chill the root beer. Mm. If you make it with mm. warm root beer, two things happen. One, it melts all the ice cream immediately. Sure. Two, mountain of foam. Alright, I've got a serious question for you. Okay. What is the difference between an ice cream float and an ice cream soda? I, I don't know what an ice cream soda is. That's the difference. Huh. Huh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Neither do I. I. I've seen them on the menu. I'm just not about to order one. There's an ice cream shop by us that has both, and I want to know what they are. I mean, you could always ask. I part of me wants to keep the mystery alive, and part of me wants to figure it out on my own. <laughs> so I feel like you just need to do social experiment, which is yeah. You and me are going to go when all this is over, <laughs> and we're going to order one of each. I mean, it's really up to you. You can. I'll wear a mask in your house if I have to. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Oh man, what, what are we even doing here? Twelve hours a day. So, what, like, what, what the fuck? What, what, what are we doing here? We're uh, movies, right? That's what we do on this show. Well, let's go into some news and nuggets. Oh, we're not just going to talk about pineapple sun kiss for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I I pineapple don't think I've had the pineapple su- sun kiss. I have had the pineapple Fanta. Mm-hmm. Fanta? Fanta? I believe it's Fanta, but I'm not. A Basinger? We don't talk about Fanta here. 
bass singer. <laughs> All right. Uh. Oh wait, okay. wait, no, no, wait! Before you do this, while we're on the yeah. topic of mispronouncing names and not sure. to do it, I feel like we ourselves have gone through Cillian Murphy versus Killian Murphy. And sure. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they did that exact thing. Perfect. And I was like, it was, "Oh, you know what it was? I was listening. No, I was listening to, the, to it today. Well, I listened to it between yesterday and today. Um, the Armchair Expert with Zoe Kravitz. Yeah. And they were talking about him, and they're like, "Is it Cillian?" Is it killing? Me? I feel like we've done this before. And I was like, everyone has done it before, Max. It's okay. <laughs> Just get him on. Just get him on the show. Yeah, uh, it's Killian. They they looked it up. You know the fact uh, check with Monica Patton. They yeah, they looked it so up. good. I love, I love the fact check. And now for my favorite part, the fact check with Monica Patton. <laughs> I haven't listened to that show in a long. I've been falling. Uh, I'm like way behind on my podcasts. Uh, the so currently the time that I'm listening to them is when I mow the lawn, and that's about it. I tried that, and because I don't want to wear these headphones while mm-hmm. I'm doing it, I was using like earbuds, and they like I was just totally blasting it out with the the. Uh, the lawn yeah, lawn. I have I'm not going to do this. So I have wireless noise canceling headphones yeah, that yeah, make yeah. it. If a I treat. had wireless ones, I might do it. But actually, the nice thing is because my sister is doing nothing, and I work. 60 hours a week. Um, I don't mow the lawn anymore, which is great. Nice. The uh, the, the only downside is uh, you could 100% run me over with a truck, and I wouldn't hear you coming. Yeah, that's another thing is I don't love that aspect of it. Um, yeah. But anyway, I, I had gone through that phase where I was like, I was listen- I blew past all of my, like I was actively seeking podcasts to listen to, and I like subscribed to like probably 12 podcasts. Mm-hmm. I was like, how am I... Uh, I mean, the answer is I'm in the car all the goddamn time. But sure, I was like, "How am I?" And then all of a sudden, I got buried in them. My yeah. my work changed, and all of a sudden, I was like looking at my queue, and there's like 37 episodes, and I was like, "Yeah," oh, I was like, "That's an episode from six weeks ago." How? <laughs> That's why my uh, I have mine set up so that like it's like the top, it's the latest three episodes, and it cycles them out. So like, I might just miss one, and it's fine. <laughs> no, I, I, I every morning I build my queue. Nice. And then, well, that makes sense with the being in the car and yeah. whatnot. And so, like, well, so the point is, like, if I don't get through it, the next morning, the daily show that I listen to gets put to top priority, sure. and everything else gets pushed down in the queue, and it stays there till when I finally have the time. And so, yesterday, I finally blew through what was left in my queue. Uh, nice. So I, like, <laughs> I literally have nothing to listen to at five thirty in the morning. I'm getting ready for work. And I was like, throw on an armchair because I there you go. get through that whole episode before my like the daily show drops at like. Well, the show airs live at 10, and it's a podcast at, like, 11.15. So um, I was listening nice. to, to some, some decks. I hadn't listened to in probably two months. So I, uh, I, I bounce it. There's a couple of celebrity interview podcasts that I listen to, and his is my favorite. But every once in a while, I'll bounce it. And, like, some of the other ones that I've tried have, like, fallen off. But the other one that's kind of stuck around that I bounce back and forth between is, obviously, his armchair expert and um, Life is Short with Justin Long. It's uh, <laughs> it's great. It's like cool it, effects. It's so yeah. <laughs> it's it's, sorry, it's good. Brian. It's very entertaining. <laughs> sorry, Brian. All right, Al. Let's get into some news and nuggets. Yes, I'm sorry I interrupted you, and then we rambled. So go. It's totally fine. That's what we do here. Uh, so the Tenant trailer, like probably the first real trailer. The other one was a teaser. The, well, there's been two. There was a teaser, and then there was like a mini trailer that was like a minute. No, there, there was a nugget. Then there was a teaser, and now this is a trailer, okay. I feel like. It felt, it felt like it was more than a tease. Like It felt like it was a dry hump. That, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> uh, I guess. Uh, the new, like, is that, I hope that that's the new phrasing that we use. Like, oh, like the new MCU dry hump dropped. <laughs> it is pretty good. Listen, uh, we, we, we've, we've got hashtag hammer cattle. Why can't we have hashtag... Teaser dry hump. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Dry hump? I like it. Uh, okay. In classic Nolan style. Well, aside from the Batman ones, because those, you had a general idea of what was going on. Yeah, Batman uh, things. Uh, it, Batman things. Which is honestly fine. Like, that's enough. Like, you know what's going on for the most part. Uh, with this Tenet trailer, we're, we're back into the Christopher Nolan world of, I have not the slightest clue what is going on here. Inversion. 
And I'm so excited about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I was like, okay, all right. Some sort of time travel. And just when you say that, he goes, not time travel. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to me? And he goes, time inversion. I'm like, okay, let's see how you're going to spin this one for the next two and a half hours and see if I agree with you by the end. I'm sure I will. But listen, he what basically, is this movie about? He basically rewrote the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of the word inception. <laughs> mm. Like, for our entire life, you know, the inception of an idea. It's always the beginning of the idea. Nope, that's not what it means anymore. It means someone invaded your brain and they put the idea there. And it's like, right. what? Yeah. yeah. Now he's making up words. Yeah. No, inversion's still a word. Uh, no, tenet. <laughs> with a backward Z. Spelt that way. <laughs> tenet is also a word. I know. <laughs> but again, tenet now... With the backward Z? Yeah. We're gonna forget the original. What we're gonna forget the tenets of the word tenet. You know <laughs> uh, that's fair. Uh, um, I, it looks it looks um, it, you know it, cinematography out of control. Always looks amazing. Uh, new composer, God bless him. Sounds great. I, Wait, is it's, Zimmer not, oh Zimmer not it, doing this one? No, he's not. Totally forgot about that. This is the one that sounds like dark funky Zimmer, which I'm fine with. <laughs> who, who was it? Was it Giacchino? Uh, Giacchino. I think so. Wait. Uh, I was going to look it up, but I realized that with my current setup, every click and keyboard stroke is very loud. <laughs> so. What did you do? You had a pretty good, ridiculous keyboard. Uh, that it, really tough to sleep in that room with. Yeah. Uh, no, I have another one that's even tougher to sleep with. Uh, <laughs> what, you yell at me? No. <laughs> yes, if you, if you type on it, it does. <laughs> Wait, is IMDb dead? No. <laughs> is this recording dead? No? Well, you keep answering me, so it's probably not the recording. I just right. went to open IMDb, and I got a 500 server error. Hmm. That's not great. Nope. <laughs> All my other tabs seem to be alive, so... And we're still talking. Um, it's definitely an IMDb. Ludwig Goranson? What? Ludwig Joranson? Goranson? Oh, Joranson? he's the one who did The Mandalorian. That's who. That, yeah, you go. There you go. I, I was like, Is it Joranson? Is that how you say that? With the O with the dots? No, no, the umlaut, I think, refers to how you pronounce the O, not the G. I assume it's... I don't know, that's why I said... Gordon. Oh, I was switching it with the J sound. Yeah, I don't think it's a soft J. It's not like yogging. It's not like yogging. <laughs> or giraffe. <laughs> I'm in rare form today. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, Wait, that, the music giraffe? sounds great. I think that's your giraffe. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, all right. So not time travel inversion. inversion. What could that mean? Uh, well, the time is going to invert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, it, it, you can see, like, it's he's not exactly going back in time so much as undoing time. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it. He's still moving forward where the thing he's acting on is going in reverse. So that's kind of what I was wondering. Based on what he said and what I was watching and the final line of the trailer, I think it's the final line or second to last line of the trailer, is that not in the typical uh, time travel, time manipulation, whatever, like movie style. It seems like once he moves it, he is in fact undoing what's happened. The one line at the end was, like, an, the ultimate mindfuck. Like, yeah. The fact that we're here, does that mean that those things never happen? And I was like, Bwah. Bwah, no, no. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Is I've replaced <laughs> permanently the Inception noise with the Annihilation noise. It seems like sure. and Caleb have bought in, so I feel happy oh, yeah. about that. Oh, yeah. 100%. But hey. We're going to talk Nolan... I should probably do Inception Noise. That's fair. Side note, though. I came across this list of movies that is like best horror movies that are not horror movies. And like number 10 on the list was Annihilation. And the picture was Natalie Portman's face with uh, Crepey Bear. Demon Bear. Behind. <laughs> we, we've decided that it's Demon Bear. I like Crepey. Like Creepy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was watching the first episode with my brother the other day because he never got, he never had a chance to like start it. And, um, it's, he liked the first one, so we'll see if he decides to pick it up and run with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I'm wondering is, by reversing time, is he still going forward in, in time? Kind of curious about what's going on there. 
uh, the other part of the things I need to know. What's with the oxygen masks? Is it related to time inversion or is it related to whatever this disastrous event is that's going to happen? Yeah, is the time inversion also inverting their lungs? I'm confused. Mm, mm. You have to ju- you just exhale. <laughs> uh, then there is a uh, there is like <sighs> the- <laughs> there's a, there's a lot there's a lot going on. There's uh, we're on ships in the middle of the ocean. And then we're inside of a stadium with a lot of dead or dead adjacent people. And I'm very curious what's going I, on I in the stadium. Up on what that stadium thing was all about. Yeah, IMDb is. <laughs> I still have it open from before, so I think I'll be all right. Yeah, you say that now, but I'm just not gonna click on anything. But anyway, it looks in- it looks tremendous, and I uh, I can't wait. Well, well, I notice other stuff with the uh, I I I uh, I noticed that 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 holy shit! I completely forgot what I was talking about. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that there was people. This is what I was talking about. I noticed that there was people in the movie that I had no idea were in it. Because mm-hmm. I think we all assumed that Michael Caine was going to be in it. And sure. We finally got it in this trailer because I don't think he was in the dry hump. I don't think he was in the teaser. No, I don't think so either. I don't like the idea of Michael Caine dry humping in the same sentence, but you know, here we are. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and also, is that Kenneth Branagh playing another Russian bad guy? Sure. Or am I miss? Was that someone else? No, it was him. Okay. So he's playing another Russian bad guy after playing a... Well, I don't know that he was a bad, bad guy in Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit, so much as that was just not a good movie. Hmm. I don't think I saw that one. Did we do that one? <laughs> <laughs> no, there has been a lot of Jack Ryan talk on here because I wrote a very popular article on... That's right. <laughs> two, uh, Jack Ryan, the show on Amazon. But, no, we never did Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. Not to be... Confused with FX on Hulu. No. <laughs> Jack Ryan the show on Amazon. Yes. What if it was Jack Ryan the show on FX on Hulu? <laughs> well, it is Tony Lancey's Jack Ryan on Amazon. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pull us out of here. <laughs> Are you excited for this? I mean, the answer is yes. Moving on. Of course I am. What's... <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. Because no, I... I knew Elizabeth Debicki was in it. I knew, obviously, that Pattinson and um, John David Washington. Yeah, totally forgot. I, drew yeah. I was just gonna say Denzel's son. I was like, no, that's a cop out. You actually yeah. like him as an actor. You've watched hey. the show, like five seasons of a show that he was one of the stars of. Like, you should probably know his name. Yeah, but, alert uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't have a complex about that right now. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> then there's that guy who was that Hydra agent in a couple of the Captain America slash Avenger movies. Yes. Yep. Took me a second, but I went through all of the faces that I could think of, and then he popped in. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's going to open some doors. Yes. (laughs) So I knew about the two of them as a star, and him and Elizabeth Debicki, and then that's that girl from Enemy slash what the hell is that movie called? Oh, now you see me. Now you see me slash Enemy. Isn't that the same actress? I don't remember. Or that two different actresses that were both an enemy that I just made from two separate movies. <laughs> that's awesome, if that's the case. Well, because I don't know. One, I don't know who you're talking about. One was his girlfriend and one was the doppelganger's wife. Sure. And oh, I'm to be is dead. It is dead. See, I'm not <laughs> yeah. See, that was right. what, when I just when my brain broke like eight minutes ago or like three minutes ago, or however long ago it was. It was because I was trying to open the IMDb app on my phone to see if that would work because the website yeah. is dead. Yeah, the website's dead. Luckily, I still have it open for later when we do the movie. So okay, we're good. It's good. We're fine. Hey, it's working on your phone if you want to use the app. Oh, okay. That's cool. Uh, so let me run through this real quick because I want to figure out that actress now. Clemens Posey, who was in, in Bruges, correct? Okay. Harry still Potter. haven't seen that. What's that? I still haven't seen that. I probably need to see it again because I don't love it the way that so many people love it. I did like mm-hmm. it. it. I thought it was sure. fine. Though. Like, I didn't... Yeah. Go nuts for it. I was like, oh, well, yeah, like that we'll have to do that. Perfect reason for me to watch it. Yeah. Uh, we can do that for the show. Let's, we have plenty of things to try and find. Uh, she was, oh, she was in Harry Potter. She was Fleur Delacour. Oh, okay. I know who we're talking about now. But she was, I, but I couldn't remember if she was the one from Now You See Me because I, did I have wasn't, that wrong? Wasn't Isla Fisher in Now You See Me? Yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the first one. She was the Interpol agent who Mark was. Oh. Well, at least I thought she was, but maybe I was wrong. Is that her? I I don't think so. She's not in this. I'm guessing not. If you if you're looking up that actress. Yeah, I don't think it is, but I knew I knew her. 
She was from Harry Potter. Yeah. Fleur. Fleur. And in Bruges. And in Bruges. <laughs> Fleur in Bruges. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait. Uh, so I'm guessing I'm guessing we're, we're looking more like August, right? Is that, is that when this is going to come out? Probably August. Well, it, de- it depends. I mean, things are starting to open up. I mean, I, I know that I've been seeing some of the updates in New York. I have not kept up with what they are, other than that, like, yeah. the sports teams are allowed to practice again. I like that at the end of the trailer, it says, coming to theaters. <laughs> Purposefully vague. I like it. Yeah, it almost is. But, like, the spacing was there. Like, like the slot is there for the time to be put in, but they just kind of etched it out. <laughs> It's just like actual high, like 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 sharpie marker, like crossed it out. Where like if you look really closely, you can yeah, you can't it's make actually it there, out, but you can see the outline of the word. <laughs> right, right. Oh man. Anyway, I uh, as per usual, I can't wait. I'm I'm very much looking forward to this one. Um, it just looks so intense. Like this, uh, they. I was worried that the music wasn't going to be where I wanted it to be, but it's, it already seems to be there from the trailer. Well, that was what threw me off is when I said Jacquino, because I was like, oh, it's one of the guys who did Star Wars, and we liked them. Right. And that was my first, like, where my mind went to, because I was like, oh, I feel like when we talked about Rogue One, it was like, oh, this sounds like a Star Wars soundtrack. It mm-hmm. sounds like something that could have been Williams, even though we know it's not. Right. But that wasn't it. It was Gorenson, who we loved the Mandalorian music. Very yes. different from... Uh, so good. But very good. I should listen to that soundtrack tomorrow at work. That I feel like that's an aggressive soundtrack. That's a we're we're fucking shit up music. Like that's like yeah. Oh, we're, I really we're, want to finish the thing I'm working shit on. Out of that right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually pretty much where I'm at. So that works. We'll make it happen. I'll finish this calendar. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what other news and nuggets you have? Uh, I have a new. Give me a new. And if I can open the tab and find the headline, Indiana Jones Five. Logan, Pass. Logan's, no I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm actually. I, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'll watch that. Logan's James Mangold confirmed to direct. Who? Logan. Oh, got it. I totally didn't follow that sentence, but it, I know, it clicked after no the fact. No better way for me to phrase it. I just read it verbatim. Got it. So I tried to really it. stress the Logan's. Frank right. Marshall has confirmed that James Mangold will be directing Indiana Jones Five with Steven Spielberg on board as a producer. Speaking okay. of Collider. Marshall, who has served as a creative voice in all four Indiana Jones films, reiterated that Spielberg won't be back to direct Indy 5, despite having been attached to the project for several years. Instead, James Mangold will be settling, sorry, settling up, saddling up and taking the reins as the director of Indy's next adventure. I almost read that as Nightmare and that (laughs) Freudian slip. (laughs) <laughs> Confirming the news, Marshall praised the Logan filmmaker as the ideal candidate to helm the project because of his, quote, love of the franchise. I okay. think James Mangold also has a relationship with Harrison Ford. It was all the right pieces coming together at the right time, the famed producer explained, adding that, quote, Steven Spielberg is staying on as a producer, so we've got the best of everything. Why do you, is there any reason why he's not doing it? That I was think, like I think just how long it has been going on for. Uh, like, like he's like, over it. Spielberg, I think, is kind of over it. That's fair. Because like the production, the pre-production of this movie has been going on for like seven years. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Marshall also revealed that scripting had only quote just started on the fifth installment of the iconic film series, so very little is currently known about the plot. However, Ford previously hinted that. The story would focus on, quote, new developments in Indy's life, as well as seeing part of the character's history resolved. Interesting. I wonder what that means. Currently scheduled for release on July 29th, 2022. Well, I know what I'm doing for my dad's birthday that year. There you go. Unfortunately, that release date has already been pushed back multiple times, and the possibility of another delay is still present. As Marshall noted how the COVID-19 crisis is likely to impact production. We're looking at the guidelines that are coming slowly from the health experts and the studios and the different parts of the business. We're just trying to incorporate everything so we can move forward and be safe. Goodness. Is, Obviously, there's going to be th- there's going to be a point throughout this where we're going to get some movies, then no movies, and then every week a movie. <laughs> I mean, that will literally be perfect for this show because we're yeah, doing I know. <laughs> It's going to obviously slow things down, so we're trying to adjust. You won't see a lot of big crown seeds, for example, for a while. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll watch that when it comes out. Um, Is uh, Shia returning as (laughs) 
I don't believe so. <laughs> Are they just ignoring that one? <laughs> They're just going to see a picture in a mental piece the way we did with Sean Connery. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Cool. Well, whatever. When that comes out, that comes out, and I'll watch it. I do. I haven't really wanted to get back into I, I want to rewatch all of the Indiana Jones movies. Like, really sit down and enjoy them. Nice popcorn. Maybe, maybe if Kim's not into it, maybe movie night with myself. We'll find out. Wow. It's been a long time. I um, will. I will come. I will put on a mask. I will sit on your back porch, looking through the sliding glass door. You don't need the mask if you're on the porch. As you're watch. No, I'll just wear it for safety purposes. Got it. Um, Got it. I'll watch it <laughs> through the window as you're sitting in the couch. We'll leave an open zoom call on so that we can like talk to each other and we can all right can we use walkie talkies oh walkie talkies i have never used a walkie talkie in a reasonable situation and i would like to i have walkie talkies they're functional they're pretty good they have long range when we were when we were kids when we like the first year we were in this house which is like 18 19 years ago we had walkie talkies because mom didn't want to get us cell phones when we were like five and eleven years old, or whatever, nice, not ten years old, or whatever we were. So, walkie talkies go out. You can do whatever the fuck you want in the neighborhood as long as you're within walkie talkie range. It's all good. Nice. That's awesome. Right. That's pretty cool. I like that. Did you wear it on your shoulder like a security guard? <laughs> no, no. Ma- uh, <laughs> did, it, did have a little clip though, so I could stick it on. Like the elastic band of the pants. Actually, I think what I did more often was I stuck it in my pocket and clipped it to the pocket. Right. Because, you know, nylon, like basketball shorts, those sure. shoot out like they were fucking greased up. So Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. <laughs> See, when we were going to we were gonna go to uh, the trip we were going to take to California that got canceled, like right as the soul happened. Oh, I totally uh, forgot we, about that. We were talking about, because uh, we rent- Kim and I were renting a car and our friends were driving down uh, from Oregon. And we were talking about, like, while we're traveling from spot to spot that we're going to stay at, we were considering picking up some walkie-talkies because, just because it would be fun, like, while we were on the road. Okay. But. Wait, sorry. You and Kim having walkie-talkies? No, no. We're going to have, we're, us and the other couple would have walkie-talkies. Oh, okay. In separate cars, traveling from destination to destination. But. I didn't realize uh, that you were planning this trip with other people. Yeah. 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 But uh, we'll have to pick that up another time. Al, would you like to get in some fun and games? Of course. Wait, first fun of all, games. have you oh. ever known me not to want to have fun or to play? That's true. That's true. I appreciate I actually appreciate you for that. <laughs> actually, actually was the wrong word. That's not what I meant. I appreciate you for that. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> Full stop. All right. This quiz comes from BuzzFeed. The title is... Do you take one of these Adam Driver characters to be your lawfully wedded husband? Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) Let us dive in. Pick your favorite color. Purple, blue, orange, black. Not a color. True. Also, we're off to a bad start because my favorite color isn't in that batch. I know. What, you said blue, orange, purple, and black? Is that what you said? Yep. Does it come in black? It comes in black. All right. Wait, what's something you look for? I already for? just consigned myself to Kylo Ren, didn't I? Probably. What, what's something you? That's probably all the only question that mattered. What's something you look for in the in a significant other? Funny without trying, emotional availability, playfulness, passion. Funny without trying. Okay. What's your dream vacation destination? New York, Costa Rica, road trip around Canada, staycation. There's beaches in Costa Rica, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pick a job. Barista, director, military, engineer. Well, I pivoted hard from my intended path of engineer, so... uh, (laughs) um, Let's go with director, I guess. Okay. In every relationship, your partner has some flaws. It's just human. Which flaw is the lesser of four evils for you? Doesn't listen, no social skills, talks too much, anger issues. The lesser of all of them? Yeah. Oh, talks too much for sure. Yeah, I agree. That's like not even hard. The rest of them are all like fatal flaws. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Favorite season. Winter, fall, spring, summer. Fall. Not really sure that I needed to give you the options for that one. And finally, what's your favorite school subject? Gym, drama, math, or lunch? (laughs) (laughs) 
you know, I actually have been working on a jo- a workshopping a joke, a very topical, very punny joke, referring to my own huskiness. But I'm going to go with math. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. This is amazing. You got Matt, the radar technician, which is the character that he played on Saturday Night Live in Undercover Boss. <laughs> that, the, that was the first one? Uh, yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's the picture of him when he's with wearing his, the orange. Yeah, yeah the, the, the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect it. As, I was thinking, like, his character from, like, Inside Lewin Davis, you know, Kylo Ren. Oh, man. Well, from Marriage Story. You Lincoln heard it Lincoln. here, folks. Al's. Uh, Adam Driver's soulmate is Matt, the radar technician. <laughs> With that, let us get into our flick of the week. Logan Lucky, released in 2017, rated PG-13, an hour and 58 minutes. This comedy crime drama's IMDb synopsis is hella short. Two brothers attempt to pull off a heist during a NASCAR race in North Carolina. Terrible. Terrible, 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 terrible description. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else you say. I, actually, my tweet length review what is probably a better synopsis and might draw you in. A witty hijinks infused heist flick pulled off by lovably simple characters, each with their own unique shtick. Logan Lucky has chemistry by the truckload. 7 out of 10. A slow first half give way to a fun, fast, frenetic second half. 6.5 out of 10. That's a that's a, a get put hours together, replace the IMDb synopsis, boom, you know what the movie is. <laughs> I went for as simple as some of the characters were. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but this uh, it, again, we have another one of these movies where clearly they were having a good time. Yes. Like they, they all, they're all jiving so well on screen that you know they were having a good time behind scenes as well. Yes, I, I'd be curious to look into the background of this movie because it, it felt a little tonally inconsistent. Oh yeah, and like scene to scene at times mm-hmm. because like there are absolutely scenes like what you're saying, and I think most of those scenes made it into the trailer because what the rest of this movie was didn't match the trailer. Right. I remember seeing the trailer. I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. Like, this is going to be like a rip roaring, like, good time. Like, it's going to be, like, interesting. Yeah, it, and and it's it more was, grounded than you expect once you get in. Yeah, it definitely was those things sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oceans five and a half. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it, like, it couldn't figure out if it wanted to be like a full blown caper or if it wanted right. to be like a melancholy. Like Western style movie, and that's and it's, there's definitely some like old school Western vibes to this. Yeah, and it, get, it it definitely suffers a little bit of an identity crisis because of that. I will say when it leans into the heist movie is the best. Absolutely, so fun. I uh, I love a good heist movie. I didn't realize until when I was watching the movie, I forget, and this happens this happens to me numerous times when I'm watching a movie and then realize it's a heist movie, and I get real excited. Like the first time I watched Ant Man, I was like, wait. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, love a love a good heist. Uh, I definitely wanted to like it more than I did, and it wasn't bad. It was just mm-hmm. like when I saw the second half of the movie, I was like, "But why didn't you give me more of this?" Because yeah, the first I'm half with of you. the movie is definitely trying to make you feel stuff and feel stuff for those characters, and I mostly didn't. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I'm kind of with you. It's a little bit, it's a little, it, it feels a little forced and almost like it, it actually pulls, it does pull away from the the fun aspect and like the the very entertaining parts of the movie. And yeah, I agree with you on the pacing entirely, like from the, from your tweet length review, like it's, it's, it's a little bumpy and like you're almost wondering like, am I going to get into those? And then, and then it, it kicks off and it takes off and it stays that way. And then it dips for another minute and then it comes back and then ends. Yeah. Which I'm actually okay with that. Although it did almost suffer from Lord of the Rings ending, but it didn't oh, matter yeah. because how short the movie ultimately was. Like, not that it was super short, but like it wasn't obnoxiously long either. Um, and it could have, like, if this movie was 15 minutes longer, it probably would have felt obnoxiously long. That's true. But yeah, it just, like, there were some scenes earlier in the movie where 
things were kind of slow and low and it perked up for a, like just a second where it was kind of just like a jab and it's like okay you can make the whole bitter sweet thing work but you got to lean all the way into that and it feels like you're not even sure you want to be that yeah it's almost like they, they start off that way then they forget about it for an hour and then they're like oh right we're trying to do something and they circle that back in and it, it's not really it, do, it doesn't add much to the story it's it's cute and whatever it's fine um but it's not like if you were to cut out like it's it's kind of silly if you just kind of told me why uh what is what Channing Tatum's character why Jimmy Logan wants the money or why he needs the money and like didn't really dive deeper into it the movie would have been just as good like granted the scenes with his daughter were very funny and heartfelt but they weren't they they didn't mesh as well with the rest of the movie yeah like well that, that's not even the problem i had like the big bait and switch at the end, like I called it, and then it was like they we did something entirely differently. I was like, oh, then I'm not entirely sure what this movie's about. And then it came back full circle to what I thought they were doing. I was like, I don't think this needed a big twist ending. Like I think you could have just, for the most part, did the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I I I like the I like the back and forth a little bit. It does it does seem like it pulls you, it twists, and then it kind of just backtracks a bit and goes back to what you originally kind of thought anyway. That's what is, I'm saying. Yeah. It's like that that double twist, that double betrayal thing. Like, no, just do the one right because it really ends up being like 15 minutes of you going, but why? Well, and that's what that's I think that literally directly contributes to the whole feeling of Lord of the Rings ending, where it's like, yeah, if you just cleaned that up just tightened that up it would feel like a much more like concise like punchy like version of the movie for sure for sure i'm I'm with you on that uh this movie has the most tremendous tagline that i've come across since we've been doing the show you ready for it i am two brothers three arms one incredible plan (laughs) 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 really good Really good. Uh, let's this uh, this this movie's got characters by the boatload, so I, I wanted to dive in a little bit uh, because I feel like each character had their own personal shtick that they either added to the character and like they like harped on it every time they were on screen, or like it was whether it was written in or like the characters like were able to bring their own to the table. And the reason why I say that is it almost feels like some of the interactions like were reshot improv. Like, they, they had an idea, and they workshopped it a bit, and then went with that. Mm. That's how it felt, at least. But uh, my, my, one of my favorite, uh, probably my favorite one is, first off, Daniel Craig should only be doing these goofy roles, because they are <laughs> trem- I love him in these goofy roles. But well, Joe what Bain, I realized is, what I was going to say, what I realized is, I don't want to watch him in any roles that are crushing his soul anymore. Sure. Like, when he is clearly having fun, everything is more fun. Yeah, I uh, completely agree. When Daniel Craig is jo- as Joe Bang is uh, a redneck chemist with high blood pressure. <laughs> and it's just like none of those like half of those things don't need to be there. <laughs> In the ca- like the whole thing with the with the salt and the egg and the and the the low sodium salt like it's just too much. <laughs> and, and he's Actually, like I so angry like about it. Every time he sits down after that, he's got the eggs. <laughs> Oh yeah, and they don't say anything anymore. No, it just becomes like this kind of nice like connection point. Like so silly <laughs> when he when he picks his leg up on the on the uh, the table in the prison ca- cafeteria and takes the salt out of his sock. I was like, I I know what this movie is, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because like we said at times, I'm not even sure this movie knew what it was. Oh yeah, for sure. Then we have uh, we have Channing Tatum's Jimmy Logan with Actually, a heart wait, of sorry. gold. Oh. Before we get to Jimmy Logan, I have one more like thought on all. This. Sure. Have you ever heard of eggs in a vending machine before? Uh, I've seen eggs in a vending machine before. You have. You're telling me that you've seen eggs in a vending. I <laughs> I have, and I went. Hup, hup. <laughs> I I really, and I've seen a lot of made to, like made to deliver like food items that like it's like no no, no that thing should be prepared before your eyes or if not before your eyes in real time. And, okay. okay. I don't love the idea of like those frozen pre-made like eggs that are in like McDonald's breakfast, say. Sure. Or something like that. Sure. But that's entirely different than the concept of 
an egg in the vending machine. Because how long has the egg been sitting in the vending machine? Right. Right. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you two scenarios. You have to choose one of these meals. How do you put a perishable food in a vending machine? I uh, uh, probably a lot of salt, which I think is the funny part <laughs> is that it's actually probably insanely high in sodium as a preservative, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to give you two meal options. One is Joe Bang's meal option. And the other is Brian stuck in a hotel room. And now I'm not sure if you know about this, no. but Brian Rooney, co-founder of, of the spin tune proper yeah. is, in a hotel room, a couple of times, uh, needed something to eat. It was late. Went out, bought some Hot Pockets, got back to the hotel room, realized, huh, there's no microwave. Oh, my God. And ran them under hot water. Oh. <laughs> so, wait, given wait, wait. the choice between the two, will wait, you wait. take in, warm water? <laughs> in plastic packaging or out of the plastic? I don't want to ask that question. I'm going to assume in. I want to ask the question, which is going to do it in the Slack right now. (laughs) Okay. So given the choice between warm water Hot Pockets and eggs in a vending machine, what's the lesser of two evils? (laughs) (laughs) I think the Hot Pockets. I think so, too. And I'm just surprised that I'm saying it. The eggs, I can't get past the egg in the the vending machine. It's too weird. It's It's too weird. It's literally one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Continue, oh, yeah. with, continue with Jimmy Logan. <laughs> okay, so we move on to Channing Tatum and Jimmy Logan. Uh, this character is heart of gold driven by family and apparently smarter than he comes across. Okay. Uh, maybe for for one scene of the movie, he's smart. The thing is, we're not really given enough to think that he can pull off what he pulls off in the end. You know what? I I do, because I've seen him play this role a bunch of times before. Uh, okay, that's... Uh, that's <laughs> Why is it that Channing Tatum always plays an idiot who's not as much of an idiot as you think? In, like, every single role. Yeah. And, like, I've seen him in a bunch of things, and it's not even maybe his things that he's most famous for. And it feels like that's always... Like, in... Was that movie Fighter? The exact I didn't same see it. Thing. Mm. Um, Haywire... Kind of the same thing. <laughs> I never saw Magic Mike, so I can't speak to that. Sure. I want to rewatch the 21 and 22 Jump Streets. Those, okay. are, those are very good. The, I guess it doesn't apply to those, but those no, are very it doesn't. funny. I've seen both of them a bunch of times. So. Yeah, the very funny movies. Uh, moving on to Adam Driver's Clyde Logan, uh, the superstitious one-armed vet. And, like, really just... Just really, like, he takes that character to every scene. <laughs> See, that's another thing. Do we need the superstition part? See, honestly, I would have preferred if we skipped some of the family stuff and focused more on the superstition stuff. Because I actually thought that that was kind of funny. Well, they ended up being inextricably linked because there was a whole thing about the Logan curse. But honestly, I never saw the evidence of the Logan curse. Uh, in spoiler territory, we'll get into that. Uh, but there is uh, there's only one real example of it. Um, so moving on, we have, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Riley Keough? 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 Uh, as Melly Logan, the tough as nails ball buster who made her own way. I have like, I have one liners for all of these characters. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's a, she's a great character. And the, uh, her butting heads with, um, uh, Moody, the, the brother-in-law or not brother-in-law X. Nope. Not brother-in-law at all. Ex sister in law's husband. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> Them butting heads and like her, like him being so insanely insecure, and her <laughs> and her constantly just ribbing him was amazing. <laughs> like the thing is, of all the people who were manipulated in this movie, he is the most obviously easily manipulated of all of them. Where it's like, if you can't see that coming a mile away. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we have uh, Katie Holmes as Bobby Joe Chapman. Uh, why do all of these racing movies have a Bobby Joe? Uh, <laughs> as Bobby Joe Chapman, the incredibly insecure step... Uh, nope, wrong one. <laughs> the regretful housewife trying to live through the, her daughter. Uh, that, that, whole, that whole thing, like, it was, it was too much. It was like, I, like that whole, like, the dance mom thing that was going on there. It was like, ugh, it was like so cringy. Yeah. And like, and I just like, couldn't take it. And honestly... We we like nothing against her or her play, portraying the role. That was actually a chunk of the movie 
that probably just could have been taken away. Yeah, especially when you consider how stereotypical it was. Yeah. Like, yeah. it felt like there was a bunch of times where it was like... <laughs> Sorry, I'm, are you watching this conversation? No, I'm not. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where it's like, it felt like so many <laughs> times where they felt like they had to... T- <laughs> can, we, can we give a play-by-play play of the conversation? <laughs> All right, I'll read it. Al says to Brian, in the plastic... Uh, Al says, at Brian, in the plastic, packaging or out? <laughs> Brian, I don't understand the question. Al, you know what I'm referring to. Brian, are you sure? Al, Hot Pockets. Brian, this can still go many ways. Is this referring to when I heated up one up under hot water? (laughs) As if I could have met any other Hot Pocket in the history of his life. Like, because I I don't know, I don't have a history with Brian. My history with Brian Brian starts basically at the the founding of the June. I hope hope that when you say, yes, that one, he goes, the first time or the second (laughs) time. Well, the thing is, the story became such where he heated the first one and the package of two the one way, realized it went horribly wrong, and then tried it the other with the second hot pocket. That would be, yeah, that would be amazing. Um, what I'm sorry, before I answer him, because we need to, we need to take a second off from that conversation. Um, yeah. What I was trying to get at is it felt like some of these like things in this story were meant to like check certain boxes. Right. And when I, I mean that purely from like a plot and like character development like standpoint where it's like trying to set the stage and every time they try to check a box, it feels like a box is being checked because right. they don't fit organically in the story. And basically the whole storyline with the ex-wife is that. And it's not on the actress at all. It's a terribly written character. Oh, yeah. And ultimately, you could have just left it out. And it, you probably would have been fine. You didn't need it. You didn't need... I don't think you needed the context. But anyway. Okay. Then we have David Denman, who is Moody Chapman, the incredibly insecure stepdad, trying to win over the approval of his ex's ex-family. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't understand the reason behind that. Uh, but he seems uh, dead set on them liking him. Which I think is kind of funny. Uh, then we have the absurd Seth MacFarlane's Max Chilblain, the overly self-indulgent and uh, validation-hungry zealous celebrity. <laughs> In the plastic! In the plastic! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So that's better. This has been delightful in the in in the middle of all of this. So yeah. hot pocket, hot pocket heated up in the plastic over the eggs in the vending machine. Absolutely, because hot I'm, pocket heated up for- out of the plastic versus the eggs in the vending machine. That's a tough call. That's quick. <laughs> <laughs> because when you first said it, I'm just picturing this horrific soggy, soggy. Where oh yeah, the middle of it is still frozen. Right, right. But inside the plastic, there's a chance. That it's well, not palatable, but edible. There's a chance that heating it up in the plastic created some sort of poison seal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really hope Brian listens to this episode. <laughs> oh god! But, uh, uh, <laughs> so, so, so we have we have Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. So wait, I that, I was like, what were we just talking about? Because I feel like I had something to say. That's what I had to say. For like. The majority of that first scene in the bar, I'm like, okay, so it's like a fake mustache, but who the fuck is this? And I'm like <laughs> staring at the screen. I was like, because I was like, I feel like I know who this is. I was like, oh my god, is that Seth MacFarlane? <laughs> How did I not know he was in this movie? Yeah. And the thing is, if that was the only scene he was in, fair enough, because it would have just been a little cameo. Yeah. He's like in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. He's in Weird. three separate discrete scenes in the movie. Very strange. Uh, then we have Dwight Yokeman, Warden Burns, the cookie cutter film slash TV prison warden. <laughs> also, well, the funny thing was, so we watched this Saturday night. We were all at the house and I was like, there's this movie that we're doing for the show. It's supposed to be pretty good. Like I heard like it was interesting. Like, let's watch it. It's on Amazon. So we all sit down and watch the movie and my brother, my mom, and my dad all fell asleep at some point within the first hour. And so me and my sister are the only ones who watched it all the way through. Mm-hmm. 
but my mom did watch more of it than my dad and my brother. And at one point they showed him, she's like, oh, that's Dwight Yoakam. And I was like, who? I was like, he looks familiar, but I have no fucking idea who that is. He's a country singer. And I was like, that's not what I know him from. Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers. <laughs> Go comment those for me, baby. <laughs> the funny thing is, when I looked him up, Wedding Crashers, I immediately knew who he was. But right. that's not actually who I was picturing him as. It was the doctor from Crank. What? What right. a random pull. No, because I've seen that movie a bunch of times. It's a good, bad movie. Man, it is a good, bad movie. Uh, isn't Chester Bennington in that movie? Is he really? I think he's the... I th- I'm pretty sure he's the guy with the nasal spray. Oh, I don't remember the spray. I've seen the movie probably like five or six times, but it's been like ten years since I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, for, for sure. I, I, we should... You know what? Let's add that to the list. I would absolutely... We should do definitely do that at some point. Uh, and then the last one I have on this list is Hillary Swank as Special Agent Sarah Grayson, which I had nothing written for because it is... A seemingly random role, like I like it could have been no. It needed to be a much bigger or much smaller role, right? <laughs> I didn't understand at all. <laughs> like they needed to have her in significantly earlier in the movie to like feel like it mattered that she was in the. Right, yeah, that was that was bizarre. Uh, that being said, let's. Uh, I want to dive into some of our favorite moments and some of our least favorite moments of the movie. But before I do that, uh, since that dives into spoiler territory, uh, anything to say before spoilers? Um. I don't think so. I, I think it's if you're looking for a heist movie and you got nothing else to watch, it's on Amazon Prime right now. Just like kind of give it a go. It's it's kind. Of, I think it's worth it, even if you're passively watching it. There's some funny stuff going on in there, uh, and uh, I enjoyed my time with it. it I will say, um, Kim, there is a, obviously we, we talked about like like most heist movies, there's some sort of twist slash reveal. Uh, Kim fell asleep just before that happened, and then woke up, and I was like, eh, it gets better. It gets better. <laughs> so, so that so she was uh, she ended up going back to it and enjoyed it as well. Um, Al, I want to hear some of your favorite parts of the movie, but before I do that, I have my new favorite segment. <laughs> really? I have here a list of plot keywords. <laughs> <laughs> of Kel, which Kelb was not a buyer of the segment. He, he was not, but I'm going to uh, continue to do it anyway because I love some of these. I'm going to try to. I'm going to burn through them as fast as I can. I'm going to skip over ones that are not uh, useful to us, like prison escape, caper, beauty pageant, random amputee. Getting interesting. Uh, West Virginia, just a bar fight, white trash, less of jo- loss of job, prison riot, prison break, man wearing a hard hat. Why? <laughs> There were hard. Uh, one armed man, reference to Fast and the Furious, setting a car on fire. Car on fire. Salt. <laughs> Birthday cake. Bare chested male. That came up also in <laughs> Ex Machina <laughs> at the end of the list. Uh, explosives that expert. British actor playing American character. I don't know. Oh, obviously. Yeah, th- duh. Um, beer <laughs> reference. Re- oh my god, we're gonna pause right here. Reference to Game of Thrones. I forgot to write this down in my favorite moments part, but the whole thing in the prison list of demands for the two remaining Game of Thrones books was amazing. It's great, it's great especially when you consider that we did this this week, and this week in the Ringer was they were commemorating the year since Game of Thrones ended, and. One of like a bunch of big articles is about the books possibly never coming out, mm. or if they do, what it's going to be like. So that is perfect timing for all that. I totally forgot about that part of it. Like, the, like I remember that they had the whole prison riot to cover their escape, and right? They, they did that whole thing. I think I might have even dozed off, like not dozed off, dozed off, but like where, you know where your like eyes are open, but you're retaining zero of the information entering your eyes and ears. I, that yeah. happened for like five, ten minutes during that part of the movie. Okay, like so the gist of what was going on, but none of the details. Basically, they they have their there's a prison riot. They write their list of demands. Uh, like I remember since, all that happening, but I don't remember any of the demands at all. On on the list was they want the two remaining. They I don't remember the titles of the I don't know the titles of the books. I'm I'm a passive Wind, Game of Thrones Wind, fan. Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring. Yeah, so they want those two books in the library because they're not there yet in the in the prison library. <laughs> And uh, and they, they want that like that's like that's one of the 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 core things they want to end the riot, <laughs> to end the lockdown. And uh, the guy tries to explain to them 
that the books are not out yet. <laughs> that they're not finished. And the guys in the prison are getting really irritated. And they want to know, how is it that people on the outside are telling them things that they don't know yet if the books aren't done? <laughs> 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 Which was just, uh, it was really just absolutely ridiculous. But uh, what, what are some of your favorite moments? Um, I mean, some of the stuff, with, I don't even remember the riot that well, but I, like, I really remember like some of the stuff, like just like the, the general hijinks as they were like, okay, here we go again. And it's like, you know, yeah. here's the next thing we're going to do. Fuck with them. Just watching the warden like slowly dissolve into like, like he wanted to cry. And it just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, the, that prison, that whole riot sequence, a lot of stuff that in there was very funny. And probably my favorite point of it was when we trigger a three alarm fire and all these firemen show up and they break into the door and they're all just sitting calmly in the room and there's a trash can of fire. And with one half a second burst, the fireman puts it out and stares at them. Yep. And it's such a great scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. Uh, I really enjoyed when uh, Naaman is released from prison and is picked up by the limo and he's not entirely sure what's going on just yet and he has an envelope full of money and he's just starts cracking up. I like that. It was just like a nice little bow on that one piece yeah. of the story that like they didn't go back to. So that was cool. And uh, I, a sucker, like, I'm a sucker for a heist movie in general, but I am really a sucker for that end of the movie montage of here's what really happened. <laughs> I always love that. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it just felt so unnecessary in this movie. Sure. Because like, it goes back to what you originally thought was the point. Yeah. Uh, so the, like, the only the only difference being they cut out uh, a couple people. Yeah, I guess so. It's just, I don't know. It just felt like an unnecessary amount of, because, like, he, he takes, he, like, they steal the money, right? Mm-hmm. And then very quickly he decides to give the money back. Like, at least it felt that way to me. Yeah. And I was like. So he's not going to fight to keep his daughter. He's just going to fix the arm situation. And like, that's kind of it. Okay. And like, they made it out. Like nothing happens. It was like, so he just gave it all back. Like, I feel like there's no way they could have known how much money was in there. Like Mm -hmm. I get the idea of you'll cool the heat off on you. If you give back most of it, like I get that whole, and then like, they kind of like run with that for a while. And then it's exactly that. Like, Oh, we took enough to make ourselves whole and then we give the rest of the money back. And it's like, but yeah, like that was obvious. Like, yeah. What we're doing like, what do we, why is this? A, this isn't a twist. Right. Right. It was a little weird. Or even like, I don't know, take half of it. So it takes them a while to realize that some is missing. Like, and it would have probably had the same effect. <laughs> but I, I will say, like, I enjoyed a lot of the hijinks around them physically trying to extract the money. Oh Yeah. Losing, best parts. Those the were the best parts. <laughs> yeah. Like losing his arm in the thing, you mm-hmm. know, like, uh, and it's like, it ends up, although, did he ever get the arm back? Yeah, he does. No, I like, I know he bought a new arm. Did he ever get yeah. the arm at, that they lost? Yeah. I, I guess maybe I just missed He goes in at, after they empty the, uh, the vacuum truck of money, he goes in the back and he takes the arm out. And, uh, I think they show you that maybe like two to three minutes before the final scene of the movie which I also really liked, where the arm is actually in the bar on the table with yes, a beer in it. holding a drink, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now that you better. mention it, I do remember that. Yeah, but, and, like, Hillary Swank is in the bar, and I was actually a little unclear on that because, like, she figured out the whole crime, basically. Yeah. And all the people who were involved with it, but she can't prove any of it. And then she just shows up at the bar and starts drinking with them, doesn't she? Yeah, but that's like uh, she's still she's still hung up on the on the case, and that was the that's what I was getting at earlier. With like that's the one part of the curse playing out is just when things seem like they're good, it goes bad. That's their curse. Their family okay, curse. Is that I was say is that what they were getting at? Because they cut yeah. it off with it so ambiguously, like that, like that crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. But I also wondered, is she was she in on it? And like she's like the coverage that they needed, no. like because she doesn't. Solve the crime, or was it like if he no? She was hung up. She was hung up on finding out what happened. That's all. I just but, thought um, it was slightly ambiguous. Where like it could have been like a can't beat him, join him if you know, or maybe she was a part of it like tacitly, mm-hmm. and we don't know that. Like she's like, uh, the Mark I was Ruffalo thinking more like, like giving them cover. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was thinking more like at this point, like she's not going to like arrest them if she figures it out. I think she's more interested in how exactly they pulled it off. And that's why I'm getting at like kind of like the, if you can't beat him, join him. Yeah, like, yeah, that's fair. Like I know you did it but I can't do anything about it. 
Uh, Here's one thing that uh, here's the one question that I had that was just left dangling for the entire movie and never answered for me. What is the relevance of Cauliflower? Yeah, we never got a flashback. When you're gonna that bothered me. If you keep doing that, eventually you have to have a callback and like show or sorry, like a flashback and show what the cauliflower thing was all yeah. about. And you um, just said cauliflower to me. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be something absurd that, later. Like, yeah. Okay. okay, like, so, like, Chekhov's cauliflower, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> uh, which is fine. Like, it could be fine. Uh, like, also what we're calling it from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but anyway, yeah, sorry. Getting back to, like, the favorites. Um, that whole thing with, like, the every bit of them trying to extract the money, like like the actual hijinks they get up to trying to extract the money, whether it be Joe Bang explaining the bomb. Yep. Them actually using the bomb. Explaining the bomb and then and then when they're in the writing it on the wall with chalk that he then later is like aggressively cleaning off the wall. <laughs> well because he doesn't want to give up the the trade secret because honestly I know. He probably would point to who it was. Like <laughs> that was great though, your your line from the intro. I see what the problem is. I twisted the bag too tight or too many times. When the when the tube comes flying back out and uh, Adam Driver catches the tube just before it hits his chest, I was like, I, I was hysterical. I was like, this is just a, like it's so absurd that it was making me. I, I was just laughing out loud. Well, that was also a moment where like I think I almost lost the thread for a minute, like in the sense of like I was tired mm. and. I was like, okay, like they put the thing in, like, well, there'll be an explosion, and then like all of a sudden the thing popped back out at them, and I was like, wait, what? Like yeah. I got, I understood the danger, but I was just like, how? <laughs> how? <laughs> like no, blow the thing up now. Like that's what you're supposed to do now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, no, like that. Yeah, that whole thing. Like yeah, him doing his like mathematical proof, explaining to him how like gummy bears and salt like uh, is going to cause an explosion. My my note on that actually says the chemistry lesson lesson slash catching of the and in parentheses not a bomb. <laughs> it's not a bomb. But, like the fact that he had to emphasize the reason he's Joe Bang is because he makes things bang. Yeah. Like all of that the yeah you know, the the actual explosion working, the vacuum tubes to get the money out, it lo- the losing of the arm, mm-hmm. the whole tense thing where they're like you know in the multiple different golf carts and yes. walking around and everyone knows there's something wrong but they're not like looking at the very obvious culprits like that right like, the, oh, yeah, oh, the security oh. guards just asking them blatant questions and when they give them a real dumb answer they're like all right <laughs> just that whole surreal absurd like thing was my best like part of that. absolutely like, I'm, I'm with you that was it was really funny i also one other piece about that that i liked is the uh, probably where the absurdity started, which was the instructions on how to rob, I think, a bank that were on his refrigerator. <laughs> or <laughs> also very stupid. Um, one okay, so this I didn't notice in watching the movie. I came across it afterwards in trivia, and I never I didn't get a chance to actually go back, but it appeared in multiple sources. So I'm assuming that it's true. At the end of the credits. Uh, it's instead of the standard "this movie is a work of fiction" disclaimer. It says nobody was robbed during the making of this movie except you, <laughs> 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 which is fantastic. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, and then I wanted to go to like I don't have a lot of least favorite parts of the movie other than kind of what we already talked about of uh, like some of the stuff that probably could have been cut out, maybe tighten the movie up a little bit because. Some of some of the character development ends up just falling by the wayside because it doesn't really matter so much to the what you're trying, what it seems they're trying to do. Uh, but basically, any scene with the warden, I hate that warden character in every movie and TV show that I see him in. <laughs> it doesn't matter who, not, not that, not the actor, just the character of the crappy prison warden. I can't stand. <laughs> and- yeah, there's very rarely that you actually get like. There's only a couple of them because they all have like pretty similar like, tropes that they fit within, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like, the warden from Shawshank is uh, is obviously a great all-time character um, because there's a little bit more depth to that character. There's, for like, on the one hand, a baseline of competence behind that character. Sure. Because too many of them, like, end up being buffoons like this one is. Right. Um, like, even the one in, like, the Adam Sandler Longest Yard. I never saw that. Oh, really? I mean, it's yeah. not, like, a good, good movie, but, like, Horse it? Funny stuff in it. Yeah, like it's, we'll check it out one day. 
Um, but that I, 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 there's some gravitas because it's played by what's his name? Oh God, I can't even think of that actor's name. He's been in a million things. You know who I'm talking about? Just look him up on your phone because IMDb is dead on online. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, and uh, so yeah, whenever I think of wardens, I think of the two of them, and I think of Doctor Chilton from the very like the many different versions of the Hannibal movies and show. And Doctor Chilton, depending on who's playing in, like hues very closely to this one where James of, Cromwell, James Cromwell, yes. Uh, there's like there's a baseline of arrogance that is totally unearned. Oh yeah, and it leads to buffoonery, and so that the Doctor Chilton is like you could. I, I think I kind of basically like break them down into those three warden types. There's, and I don't remember the name of the warden in Shawshank, but there's that warden. There's the James Cromwell warden who is just like cruel and totally like materialistic, mm-hmm. and occasionally is competent, occasionally is not. Ultimately, he'll never quote unquote win because but he's not as nearly as bad as the Chilton and the Chilton is what most wardens fall under this warden is a Chilton where it's like, <laughs> everything is fine like, but we've got it under control like, right. while Hannibal's eating someone's face and it's like you know yeah. <laughs> or yeah. you know two convicts have escaped they're robbing NASCAR you have no idea and your whole thing has been locked down by a bunch of idiots who lit a garbage can on fire right so, like that's when you boil it down, like that's what's going on, and so many different versions of media, the warden is a children. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think. One, one of my closing thoughts here was in a uh, some of the things that we mentioned that could have gone could have been tightened up. Maybe you could cut some of the again random character development or storylines. Don't really add to the to the movie as a like what it's actually trying to pull off. At the end of the day, even if you were to fix those things or change some of them. I don't think there's a situation that pu- that would push this movie above the seven that I put it at. And I think that's fine. I just feel like that this movie is a seven movie. Like, there's, I don't think there's an adjustment that needs to be made or would be made that would push it over without making an entirely different movie. It could have been... Yeah, no, you would have had to make it differently. It could have been an eight or more if they leaned into some of the kookiness of what went on in the second movie half uh. like second going to third act stuff like if you went and made it like i said like a full-blown caper where it's just like all of it is over the top and campy and and like because like that's what they like in its purest best moments like that's what they're doing like it's super campy yeah it's but that, I, I wondered if you did that though and you stayed that way i feel like it would end up landing at a seven for me anyway because like i find that's a very entertaining and i'll rewatch it and rewatch it but like I don't know. There's something about that that feels like a perfect, like the perfect situation for a seven, maybe an eight, maybe. But like, yeah, like that's I, like this yeah, type of movie that you're. Hard cap on how good it could be. Well, I guess if they did that, it would be Knives Out. That's oh, that's a good point. You know what I mean? Like you know, a different like color yeah. of that, but like it's kind of it would be kind of the same thing. And uh, we're we're here for that, right? Well, yeah. I guess you would have to. All right, so you'd have to. You'd have to make the the tone a lot more consistent. You'd also have to have a lot... There are some fun design language things that they do. One of my favorite parts of it was uh, the, uh, the, 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 the mention of the red swing and the money that's under it. And then when we are at uh, Joe Bank's house later on, the shovel that's left on his porch ha- is red. Mm. And I was like, oh, cool. That's a fun, that's a fun nod, like a visual language thing that I appreciated. Uh, but more like a lot more of that because I feel like Knives Out has that by the boatload, and like yeah. that's what really makes that movie uh, special. Yeah, uh, but I guess that's my point is if you decided to commit from the beginning to be that sort of movie, then it would have been good. I think it would have been sure. much better than it was. I I think they by like jerking us around so much, you never get to fully immerse yourself in what's going on because. Every time you kind of think you know what the movie is, it switches on you, but it's not. It doesn't have an enhancing effect because sometimes that can be the case because it keeps you like on your toes in the yeah. sense of oh, what's coming next? And in this case, I'm like, can we not do that? Th- oh, we're gonna do that thing next. Okay, we're mm-hmm. gonna be here for what five minutes, ten minutes? What are what are we doing here? Yeah. Um, 
You're, you're also a fan of the heist movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, kind of very specific. Like, I wouldn't say, like, I go and seek them out a lot. Mm. But when there's one that has that indescribable aura around it, like, when you, like, yeah. you just, it's like when you see it, you know. Uh-huh. Well, Which, like, like me watching Ant Man. <laughs> yeah, like Ant Man or like Knives Out or mm-hmm. like there's a bunch of different movies like over the years where it's like I I think even sometimes like you'll see a trailer it's like eh and then you see like the full trailer and you yeah. get past the dry hump to a full trailer right. where you're like oh this has got something to it like I mm. I could get along with this or even where you're like hmm, that, that could be look interesting and then you sit down and see the movie and it's like this is what I'm here for yeah. I, uh, I, yeah, for sure. I definitely, and, like, there's like, even, I, like, darker, I was saying, there's even, like, darker, like, heavier versions of, it, like, something like Inside Man. Like, I'll watch that movie all the time. And that movie is, like, sure. built on twists and stuff like that. It's, yeah. Well, like, Inception is a heist movie. Yeah. Um, the, but then, like, there's, like, the more traditional styles, like Ocean's Eleven or, like, The Italian Job. Like, those are, like, I love marketed that as. I, I haven't seen that movie in a long time, and I remember loving it when I watched it. So I, I watched that movie probably it, so. thirty times. So N- nice. Okay, we'll have to we'll have to do that one. That was a big FX movie on TV, like movie, like or FX <laughs> presents whatever it is. Like I forget what the. I think that was like one of the last movies I got like a screener copy of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, remember when yeah, movies but- were a thing. What I said. Remember when minis were a thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have to do some more heist movies, just because I really enjoy watching them. But uh, any other closing thoughts on Lou and Lucky? No. Well, then that's all for this week's episode of Flicks in the Six. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have a movie for us to review or nuggets for us to discuss, you can send those requests by tweeting us at the Spin Tune. Tune in next week for more movie and beer goodness. Until then, I'm Anthony Costanzo. I'm Al Bielsi. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>